Yo, what is up? It's Mike the NBA Guy here. Uh, first of all, apologize for any background noise you may hear. The neighbor is mowing their lawn, but they've been mowing for like an hour and they haven't stopped. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. So I decided to just quit waiting and record this video now. Anyway, they're probably going to stop the second I finish recording, but such is life. Anyway, getting back into it. Today, I want to talk about three players, specifically, who I believe have Hall of Fame cases, and I want to discuss whether or not they are Hall of Famers. And these are three players I think I, I think tend to be fairly controversial when it comes to the Hall of Fame discussion. Those players are Dwight Howard, Carmelo Anthony, and Rajon Rondo. So to get right into it, I'll start with Dwight Howard because he is by far, in my opinion, the easiest player, uh, out of these three at least, to say, yes, they're making the fucking Hall of Fame. No question in my mind, Dwight, Dwight Howard is a Hall of Famer. I really don't understand how anyone could not think this dude is a Hall of Famer. This man's a three-time Defensive Player of the Year, led the league in rebounds five times, led the league in blocks twice. He has made an All-NBA team eight times in his career, including five first teams. Now, to be fair, Center position was weak as fuck when Dwight Howard came into his prime because Shaq was leaving it and, you know, you got guys like Duncan and KG who are power forwards, at least technically, especially in, in Tim Duncan's case. But nevertheless, uh, you know, weak position or not, five All-NBA first teams are five All-NBA first teams. That's pretty impressive. All right. Um... And not to mention five all defensive teams, which I'm very surprised he doesn't have more defensive teams. But like to be fair, um, after his prime, uh, so after 2012 when he made his last defensive team, he did kind of fall off a cliff due to injuries. And also prior to 2008 when he won his first defensive team, you know, the league was really stacked with big men who were great defenders, specifically Kevin Garnett and Tim Duncan. So when you're competing against both of those guys, it's very difficult to make an all-defense team. Ben Wallace, too. So anyway, look, I don't know how anyone could possibly not think Dwight Howard's a Hall of Famer. In my opinion, Defensive Player of the Year is the second most impactful or important regular season award. Um, I don't understand how anyone could really disagree with that. This dude led the Magic to the finals in 2009 and came very close in 2010, and was still very successful in 2011, despite never really playing with another superstar. And yeah, he got injuries later in his career, he didn't play well with the Lakers or the Rockets, but look, Dwight Howard's a fantastic player. He was the best big man in the league between Shaq and Embiid, and I'm not saying Embiid is necessarily better than prime Dwight Howard, I'm just stating the fact that, you know, that's just how good Dwight Howard was. You know, the, the, the center position may have been weak, but you know, being the best in the league at a certain position is being the best in the league at a certain position, and I don't see how anyone could possibly say Dwight Howard's not a Hall of Famer. The most difficult one in my mind is Carmelo Anthony. Um, looking at his accolades, I mean, the man, first of all, fantastic scorer. Let's, let's not get it twisted. Maybe slightly overrated by New York Knicks fans, but fantastic scorer. He should have won Rookie of the Year over LeBron James, in my opinion. If you look at the stats, um, I really don't understand how LeBron did win it. Uh, honestly, I don't know how many games their teams won, though, so I would have to look at that. Uh, anyway, he was only, despite being considered one of the all-time great scorers, and he is an all-time great scorer, the dude only led the league in scoring once. Which just seems kind of odd to me. I know he played at the same time as Kobe and LeBron and Kevin Durant, but, like, once? How do you only lead the league in once when scoring's your whole thing? All right? And you look, he's made six All-NBA teams, with four of them being the third team and zero first teams. And then that's kind of it for his accolades. The man's been a pretty bad defender his entire career. When he when he really tried, when he really wanted to, he was a pretty solid defender. But other than that, like, for the most part, he was not a very good defender. Um, he never made the finals. I believe he only made the conference finals once with the Denver Nuggets in 2009. And that was a super impressive season. Don't get me wrong, but Carmelo Anthony just didn't contribute to winning that much. Um, ten-time All-Star, like, it it just, it's just tough for me. The dude's real high on the all-time leading scoring list, relatively anyway, high. I just don't know with him. I, I feel like I have to say, 
it's so tough because he just hasn't, like, the dude's a pure scorer. That's all he does, you know? Like, he's, he's not a good playmaker, he's not a good defender, he didn't get rebounds or anything. The dude was just a scorer, and to only ha be a scoring leader once as a dude who's known as a scorer, and I know that, you know, context is important, obviously, but come on, man. Like, once, and he didn't really lead his team just to wins, I, I think that because of how weak the Hall of Fame is in the NBA, Carmelo will be a Hall of Famer simply because of the massive amount of points he put up. It would be wrong to keep him out of it, but like it's real close and I don't expect him to be like first ballot. Like it's a touchy, he's a, he's a very touchy Hall of Fame case in my opinion, but I think he just barely sneaks in. And the last player I want to talk about is Rajon Rondo. And Rondo is another very difficult player for me. He has a, he's had a very weird career. He's led the league in assists three times and steals once. He's been on an all-defensive team four times, um, with two first teams, two second teams. And then, like, he's not known for his scoring. He's not high in points. Um, he's only been an all-star four times. He has two rings, but in neither of those rings was he in his prime. Like, he was a legit contributor on the 2008 Celtics and on the 2020 Lakers. Even if he wasn't great in the finals, he was very good in the Western Conference in the playoffs. But he wasn't in his prime, you know? His prime, I would say, was like 2010 to 2014, when he was making All-Star teams and All-NBA teams. So 2008, he wasn't really a prime player yet. He definitely wasn't one of the three best players on that team. Um, and he got them back to the finals in 2010. He was one of the best players then. But he just... The dude's only made one All-NBA team in his career, and it was a third team in 2012. And, again, context is important, okay? But, like, you know, like, accolades with no context mean nothing. However, accolades are still important. And one All-NBA team in your entire career for a Hall of Famer... And the man's only got... I mean, it's only four All-Defense teams. The problem is, he had a very short prime. Because then he started, he's had injuries on and off, and he's had, like, issues with coaches, and he's moved around, and he doesn't get along with people very well. And I just can't in good conscience say that Rajon Rondo is a Hall of Famer, in my opinion. It's, I mean, maybe he makes it in one day because the league is, you know, they let a lot of people into the Hall of Fame. But, honestly, I can't say that I think Rajon Rondo deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I just, I just don't. I just think he hasn't, um, he hasn't quite done enough. If the, if he stays with the Lakers another year and they win another title, then, and you know, he contributes again, then maybe I gotta relook at it and I consider him again. But at this point, I just don't think I can say Rondo is a Hall of Famer. So yeah, um, that was my video. I just wanted to talk about this today. Uh, these are just some players who I think should be, uh, should or should not be in the Hall of Fame and people have been discussing. Quick side note, or PS, uh, Derrick Rose, in my opinion, dude's a Hall of Famer. Look, he won an MVP. Like, that's all you need to do. He's had some good stuff outside of his career, but the MVP is the greatest regular season award you can win, and you can't, I don't think you can have a dude who won an MVP and not put him in the Hall of Fame. Like, that's just, that's just my opinion. I think it's too big of an award to just leave someone out, no matter what the rest of their career. The dude's career could have ended immediately after 2011, and I think he'd still probably be a Hall of Famer just because the dude won an MVP. Like, how do you leave that out? Anyway, that's why I didn't make, like, a whole section of the video for him. Uh, so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you disagree with my Hall of Fame case for any of these players. And keep checking on my channel for new content I've been uploading every single day. Thank you. Have a good one.